what is the scene? My name is Thaddeus and I'm glad that you've joined me for this video. If you're wondering what I just said, what is the scene, right? Like actually in Trini, we say, what's the scene? That's sort of our Trini way of saying, hey, what's up, right? Anyway, uh, today I'm really excited for this video. Uh, just a little bit of a walkthrough of a sculpt that I did, a 3D sculpt. Um, I used to be a character artist in the video game industry and 3D sculpting is one of my passions. And this was a sculpt that I did off a, off a, uh, a photo actually of a, a photographer I used to follow uh, who is just got these really moody, nice um, sort of um, the sculpt, uh, sorry, not sculpt, but photos, right? Like, uh, and he takes like these black and white photos of different um, types of people and so on. A lot of uh, what he photographs actually is uh, people on the street or, uh, you know, homeless people and so on. And his, his photos just have this moodiness to them and he captures like the soul almost of like these people, right? And there was one photo in particular that really captivated me that I was like, oh man, I gotta sculpt that face. And this, this sculpt is sort of based off of that photo. It's not a, uh, quite a match of the photo, but it's just based and inspired off of that photo. So I wanna just walk you through some of the, the process for this sculpt. And hopefully you can glean maybe some tips uh, some techniques uh, that I use in order to achieve this this sort of a sculpt. Maybe if you're new to, to 3D sculpting, you get an idea of like kind of the process and so on. Or if you're uh, perhaps thinking about venturing out into it and you've not yet gone into 3D sculpting, maybe this will give you inspiration to like get into it, right? Because I love to see new artists coming into the field, especially Christian artists. Uh, I'm a Christian myself, man of faith, and I love to see other Christian artists flourish and so on. So hopefully this will be a blessing to you. So let's jump in to this sculpt and let me walk you through it. All right, so starting off with this sculpt, I'm just using a base mesh that I built in Maya, I think it was, uh, where it's basically just a, a generic head, right? That already has UVs on it, so I don't have to worry about doing UVs and stuff. I can have a base to start from instead of starting just straight from a sphere. Especially if you're in a production environment, you don't wanna be starting everything from scratch, right? Um, that you wanna have some sort of a base mesh that you can start off. So if you're new, to the 3D game, that's a good tip. Build yourself a good base mesh or even download one. There's plenty of really good solid base meshes that come with UVs that you can find on sites such as Super Central or 3D Total or wherever it is, like these different forms, you'll, it's pretty easy to find, just search it, right? Um, you'll see here the, the reference photo that I was using to sculpt from, right? That was the photo that that photographer took. I think it was of a homeless man, I'm not for sure, so don't quote me on that and don't be offended by it. Uh, but the, the face, it just had such a, a depth to it, especially the wrinkles in the face. There was just like, a, I don't know, a greediness to it that I really liked. And I wanted to capture some of that. And uh, the, the wrinkles on, especially around here, around the bridge of the, his, his brow and into the nose and how it just, it, there's this real fleshy feel as the, the skin crinkles and folds upon itself there that, I don't know, I just really liked and it looked like it would be really fun to sculpt. Uh, one of the things I'll see as you're sculpting wrinkles, especially wrinkles as deep as this, that a lot of um, newbie sculptors perhaps make a mistake of is that they'll just use like a damn standard brush or maybe just a standard brush um, and cut into the model, right? Like they're slacking, ha hacking into it and making these deep creases, but they're not thinking of the volume of the wrinkles around the creases, right? Like these creases, as they, they go into the skin, they also create like on the other side of it, roundness or volume, right? So you've got to, as you're sculpting these creases and so on, think about the volume around them, right? You see this also in the bags under the eye as I sculpt them, right? I'm not just cutting into and creating the wrinkles, but I'm also creating some volume to it. And I'm also dragging the skin down because gravity affects it, especially skin that's old, right? It's gonna be a little bit more, um, uh, I guess, hangy, right? That you, you, you have to sculpt that into it. It's not gonna come automatically. Now, ZBrush does has a modifier to your brush that you can add in gravity. So you can utilize that. I sometimes will do that on my standard brush is add in a little bit of gravity so that it will start to pull down on the, the clay as I sculpt, right? So you can utilize that to help you out. Um, again, here around the eyes, you're seeing continuing to use these tools. Uh, I'm very simple in the terms of the brushes I use. Oftentimes, uh, newbie sculptors will get hung up on like, oh man, what, what kind of brush are you using here and there and there? Really, it's super simple. Like I'm literally, I just have six brushes that I use. Um, you know, I use the clay build up. I use the standard brush, I use the move brush. I use the inflate tool, uh, the pinch brush, and then the damn standard brush to do those deep cuts into it. That's pretty much it. 
Like that's majority of my sculpting are those brushes. Unless I'm doing like maybe some hard surface, I might use a planar brush or something like that. But for the most part, most organic, organic sculpts, you can get away with just those six brushes. Um, you'll see here as I put in some of the details on like the lips and the creases around the um, the the labial fold there, right? Like um, and 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 the cheeks and so on. That uh, I'm just doing this with the damn standard brush. I'm doing this by hand too. A lot of the detailing that I'm doing, especially around the wrinkles of the eyes and on the cheeks, are all done by hand. And I wanted to do that purposely. I didn't use alphas. Uh, more so, I guess, for the challenge of it. <laughs> I just really enjoy putting in those finer details. Uh, so I actually use minimal alphas as I could to achieve this, this um, final product, right? So it's all mainly just hand sculpted details. And that again, that's not the most efficient way, but this is a personal project and I just want to have fun with it. Uh, here you'll see me starting to work on some facial hair for this guy. I played around with a couple of different hairstyles before I kind of landed where I did. I, I figured I wanted like a little bit of a biker feel to him. So he's got like this, I don't know what you call him, like handlebar sort of uh, mustache with like the chops around the, the, the chin, um, the jawline, right? Uh, it kind of looks like a Hulk Hogan sort of uh, a vibe, I guess. And I thought it was appropriate for, for this particular character model. Uh, in terms of the hair that I'm sculpting here, you can see how I'm layering up detail on it. Right? And that's really important that as you uh, build your sculpt, that you're layering detail on, on, on top of one another, right? So if you look at how I sculpt the hair, right? I'm first laying in the big shapes, the big clumps of the hair using the, uh, the clay build up tool and the standard uh, brush with like an alpha on it. Usually like a, I think it's the alpha 39 that I use that just kind of sharpens that brush a little bit to add in that th those details. Uh, so I'm sculpting those big kind of wafts of hair, I guess. And then afterwards I come in with a damn standard brush in additive mode in a smaller kind of radius to add in now the strands of hair that provide that high level detail on top of the, the bigger forms that I've sculpted. And really as you sculpt, you need to keep that as a rule of thumb. A lot of times, um, you know, when I was teaching, and uh, my students at see you know novice sort of mistakes was usually they would be jumping ahead too quickly to want to putting the poor details and the fine details and the alphas and all that stuff um, that we love to kind of all over right as <laughs> as artists. But if you do that too early and not establish your fine your your underlying forms first, it's not gonna look good. It's just gonna look like a high frequency detailed clump, right? Like it's not going to really have good form to it. So you need to be focusing in on silhouettes, on big forms, on big gestures of the sculpt. And you're going to be using tools like your move tool um, and your clay buildup brush really uh, to, to make those big forms first. And also as a rule of thumb, you do that at your lowest subdivision level. Like for me, the way I work is that I'll start off with the lowest subdivision level I can to achieve the detail and the big forms, right? and really try to push that as far as possible. Get the maximum amount of detail as you can out of a subdivision level before you subdivide. Make that a discipline for yourself, right? That, and what it'll do is, it'll, because you have a lower resolution mesh to work on, it'll prevent you from jumping ahead of where you are in your sculpt to do higher details. So try, train yourself that you, know, you start with low res and then do as much as you can with that, and then you'll you know, subdivide after that. Now, I know if you're using like Sculptress and that dynamic tessellation, it's a little bit different, but same principle applies that you're trying to use bigger brushes, bigger sort of um, ideas, right? To lay that down first before you move into your high frequency details. So keep that as a rule of thumb. It's kind of the same for almost all art that you do in painting as I'm painting. I'm the same way. I'm laying out big forms first and then coming in and doing the details, right? So Make sure you don't jump ahead of where you are in a sculpt. Now here next, you'll see that I start to do some eyelashes and simply using a Z sphere to create one eyelash and then duplicate it around the eye. And then I'm gonna use my move tool and whatnot to start to morph those and make them seem a little bit more, um, you know, less uh, the same all the time, right? Now I did end up painting a color map for this guy. Because uh, initially I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll do this as a render, you know, pop it into Blender or Maya or whatever and render it out uh, with some nice lighting. 
uh, as maybe a turntable and so on. But I ended up actually scratching that just because it ran out of time. Uh, well, not really ran out of time. Lost, honestly, <laughs> kind of lost interest. This is a, a personal project. And actually, I was thinking of it more along the lines of um, for 3D print. So, you know, if it's 3D printed, unless you're getting it, you know, color printed, uh, it's really useless having a color map. But I'll still walk through a little bit of my process of painting color maps, right? So typically when I start off, so this is poly painting color maps, I'm gonna lay out big, again, ideas of uh, the colors and tones that I want for the skin. And notice also that there's a lot of variation within the skin. Now, one of the th cool things that you can do in ZBrush is add in that variation in, into your brush, right? By uh, causing like more color jitter and hue jitter um, within your brush settings, right? You can automatically add these, these um, imperfections within this, the skin, so to speak, as you're painting. Now think also about the different um, warm and cool tones within the skin. Oftentimes within the beard, especially if there's stubble and so on, there's more cool tones in there, like you get blues and greens and stuff coming through from under the skin. And that's the, the hair follicles basically giving you that, right? Whereas on like areas like, let's say the lips and around the eyes and so on, you're gonna get more warm tones, uh, sometimes even violet tones uh, are on the lips as uh, your undertones, right? And then next you'll also see that I'm using uh, I'm painting like these kind of veins there. And that's actually just a standard uh, alpha in ZBrush. Uh, in all of this painting of the, the the skin textures, I actually didn't use any custom alphas. It's all just standard alphas in ZBrush. You can achieve quite a lot with just simple alphas. And what I'm doing here is I'm laying in too hard, like I'm, I'm making these way too pronounced, these veins underlying. And um, what I'll do afterwards, after I've laid in this, these vein structures underneath, and especially in the areas where the, you know, those blood vessels are close to the surface, so such as here along his chest, his nose especially, around his lips and ears and so on, those are thinner areas of the skin where you'll start to see veins showing through, especially in older skin where it's thin. And so I'm laying those in too strong, and then I'll come over that again with another pass of skin tones, like the top epidermis of the skin over top and I'll put my transparency on the brush really low. Now, when I paint um, textures in ZBrush for skin, I'm oftentimes just painting on one layer, but I know other artists who will use layers and layer up their, their skin tones. For me, I just do it in one, especially for something, a, a personal project like this, where not really like a, a final production sort of model, uh, but that's sort of the technique that I'm using here. Is as you layer it up, you see that you get these this nice detail that you wouldn't get if you just try to one pass it, right? So again, think in layers as you're painting your skin tones. I'll, I'll fast forward ahead in the, the the video here, just so you can kind of see what the final skin tones look like. Let's jump ahead there on there. And you can see I'm, I'm laying in now this epidermal layer, right? Over top what I've painted already before with a, a, a low transparency on it. And you can see it's starting to build up this nice um, diffuse layer off the skin that I could use if I threw it into like a renderer and so on for final render. So here's the final model of all the details and so on. The pores are on the nose and all the different warts and stuff and uh, you know the, the 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 skin detailing and all of the cracks and the wrinkles and all that stuff. Now I over sculpted these details obviously like this is <laughs> way too um, overemphasized, almost characterized, right, in this model. Uh, and the reason being is, again, like I said, I was thinking about doing this for 3D print, and sometimes depending on the printer that you're using, you have to overemphasize those details, especially if you're printing small. Depending on the scale of your model, you might have to like just, you know, give it a little bit more punch so it comes through in that 3D print. Uh, actually, to date, I still haven't had an opportunity to actually get this guy 3D printed. So maybe that'll be a project for a later video that I'll share with you guys. But anyways, hope that you enjoyed uh, this little, I guess, walkthrough of this model and my process. I hope that you learned something and took something away from it. Or maybe just it inspired you. And maybe you're going to go try your own sculpt and find a, a photograph that really inspires you as well, right? Uh, obviously, I didn't cover a lot of uh, things that I could have in terms of head sculpting. I'm going to maybe do another video in the future where I'll cover things like, you know, establishing good anatomy on a head and proportions and those sorts of stuff. But I'm hoping to do more of these videos on this channel. Again, this channel exists as a, a place where I can bring together two of my big passions, right? One is theology, which is basically the study of Christian doctrine and how it matters for all of life, right? It informs all of our life uh, in terms of apologetics and giving a defense for the faith or how we live in this world as Christians and 
what is God's, um, you know, design for human flourishing and so on. Those are topics that I'm passionate about, that I speak about, that I've studied, I've done my master's of theology. And uh, I like to use this channel to share that and to bless others with that sort of training and information. But also, um, my second great passion in life is creativity and uh, creativity in multiple disciplines. Uh, I love 3D sculpting. I came out of the video game industry where as a 3D character artist. I also do painting and illustration. And you'll see some videos on this channel as well with that that you can check out uh, going through the archives. And yeah, I'm just hoping that you'll find something on this channel that uh, blesses you, that's a help to you. And um, yeah, that you can Perhaps if you've not already, subscribe uh, so you can keep up to date on all of the latest. If you want, check out the website at theotivity.com for more um, articles and resources uh, on Christianity and apologetics and the reasons for the faith. Why do we believe in Christianity even? And how is it relevant to everyday life? You'll find articles that go deep into uh, biblical exposition and those sorts of things too. Right? Uh, but then you'll also find my creative products as well, uh, where hopefully that you can be inspired. I love to see Christian artists as well. So if you are a man of faith, woman of faith, right, and you are a Christian and you're in maybe the 3D industry or you're an illustrator or a painter or whatever it is, uh, please drop a comment down below. I love to meet other Christian creatives and uh, maybe link your profile, your, 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 your portfolio. I'd love to see your work, right? Um, please uh, drop a comment. Let me meet you. I'd love to see uh, other Christians in this sphere. Uh, I know when I was in the gaming industry, there was not a whole lot of uh, other Christians that I knew of anyways, uh, or at least not Christians that took their faith really seriously. And I'd love to meet others. Um, anyways, hopefully you've gathered something uh, that you can take away from this video. Until next time, Solidio Gloria.